dude. I wish I had a camera down there so you could see, you know. I'm Ryan, you're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and in this video, I'm gonna do my unboxing and first impressions thing with a pile of pedals from Denmark. Designed in Denmark is what it says on the side of the box. This is from the brand Stoy. Ever heard of them? Now you have. So anyways, what do we have here? We've got the Again Again, which I'm assuming is a delay. Then we have the Low End. I have no idea <laughs> what that does, maybe an EQ or something like that, maybe an octave. And then we have the Roaring Bulb, which I've actually already opened. This is the second time I've tried to film this video. And the problem with this pedal was that it, it's a tube overdrive and they sent the European nine volt adapter with it. And I couldn't get it to work with, you know, any US nine volt adapter. So they sent me the correct nine volt adapter so I can actually turn on this pedal and actually use it. So anyways, look at this sticker. This sticker is huge. Put that on the back of your car, guys. <laughs> Here's the pedal. Really fun. What a unique case on these. I love it anytime a pedal company goes with their own style case. And I know this is kind of a throwback to you know other brands and stuff like that other style cases that do this sort of thing but i just think it's special anytime a company gets away from you know the standard kind of like hammond box enclosures and does something a little bit different with their pedals well, let's check out the again again another giant sticker <laughs> i'm gonna have a collection of giant stickers here do you think i'm gonna need the manuals I should pull them out just in case. Oh, look at that. Same size enclosure. They do the, uh, the Strymon thing where they can sit right next to each other. The top jacks. They're big pedals, but that could give you a really fun, clean look. Now the low end, the mystery pedal. What does this do? Got a high filter, a blend, a bass filter, and an on switch, and an on off foot switch. No immediate hint at what that does. It could be an EQ, but it's got the blend. Monophonic Octaver. That's what it is. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna get these wired up and see what they sound like. Fingers crossed anyways, hopefully <laughs> this power plug works. That looks good, right? Good order, octave into overdrive into delay. You could probably make the case that the octave could go after the overdrive, but my instincts are saying before, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna use, uh, by the way, I'm gonna use my Fender Player Plus Strat here because it's just a really good pedal demoing platform guitar with its singles and it's got a humbucker and you know, all those little options. And it looks really cool, right? I love the look of this guitar. And of course, I'm gonna run through my two Princeton's rig. I think some people were afraid that the two Princeton's rig was over since I got the Tone King, but I've decided that the Tone King is going to be my guitar demoing amp and the two Princeton's are gonna be my pedal demoing amps. So the two Princeton's live on for the time being. Long live the two princes. <laughs> Let's start with the overdrive just because I wanna make sure it works. <laughs> with that new power supply, here's my clean tone. And that is the bridge pickup. Okay. 
there's a boost. There we go. It works. Success. That, that sounds monstrous. Just a level boost when this side is off. Yeah, it seems like it. Does it do any EQ shaping with the gain off? Yep. useful. It's an EQ and boost pedal and a drive pedal. playing was huge, right? You know, that, that legitimately sounds awesome. It's just massive sounding. <laughs> it's got that like cartoony disappointment sound to it. <laughs> I don't feel disappointed right now. I just meant to play this instead. Let's try it on the neck pickup. Mostly cuts off all your volume at a certain point. Right there is the bottom end of it.
Yeah, that sounds really great. It honestly does. I like how like full it is and big sounding it is, but it's also really nice and like kind of crispy. It has that kind of like edge of loose grit that I tend to chase. a lot there's a lot you know to debate as far as like tube pedals go and I don't know what's happening with the tube how dependent this circuit is on the tube it might be very dependent it might not be dependent on the tube at all it could be a marketing gimmick for all I know but I do know that I'm liking the sounds that I'm getting out of this I'm not feeling any heat coming off of there and it is 9 volt Oh, 12 volt, 12 volt AC. So it is very different power than a normal pedal. What happens if I go the other way? Oh, that sounds weird. Oh man. <laughs> All right, so we've been low gain on the neck pickup. Let's go high gain. It's so present with that. Like it feels like it has this really nice, huge, round bottom into it. No jokes, guys. pick up scoop, right? more than I thought I was gonna like a tube overdrive. It's crispy, it's got this loose grit, it's got this huge, warm, like 
punch in the gut sort of thing. I think that's really fun that, you know, you also get a kind of like preamp and EQ sort of thing with this switch off. So it's kind of like a double function sort of pedal in that way. enough time on this pedal let's check out let's check out the octave we'll save the delay for last now this has it has an effect out and a dry out jack on the back so you could be splitting into stereo or splitting into a wet dry rig with this monophonic octave let's see if i like this this switch does so the blend the high filter and the bass filter are all pretty self-explanatory high filter adjusts a filter that will shape the tone of the sub octaves high order harmonics bass filter adjusts a filter that will shape the tone of the sub octaves fundamental and lower order harmonics please note the bass filter knob is only active when this sub switch is set on so that's what this is this is the sub switch so this only works when this is on That's interesting. Good to know. Glad I read the instructions. It does that monophonic, it does that monophonic glitchy thing. Which I honestly really like. I think it's a fun, like, kind of quirky texture to have when you're messing around with an octave pedal. Well, that's a lot of low end. It's dirty sounding. It's got like a fuzz thing going on. shaking the wall behind me. Stuff is rattling. Pull back, blend back just a little bit. Check out the range of that bass filter on this setting. I think it's so low, I can't even hear it on that setting. I can feel it though, that's for sure. I'll have to try this with the bass. All right, let's check out the range of that high filter.
Let's try it with the drive. That is it's unique sounding. It's been a while since I messed around with like an analog octave pedal. I feel like there's something kind of unique going on with this one. I see why it's called the low end now, because this is not a high like high octave, octave pedal. This wants to do, do low stuff for sure. I can see myself using this on my pedal board. This is only coming out for special occasions. Like this is a, you know, a very specific creative moment sort of decision for your pedal board. I don't know, you guys tell me, would this be an always on pedal for you? Are you one of those octave weirdos? That's always gonna have an analog octave on, on their board. I could see it being very useful for bass players. I'll try it with bass at the end of the video. All right, now the again, again. This one's fun because it's got an oscillator switch. You know I love making spaceship noises with my delay pedals. So that's given me a lot of hope. And it has an expression jack. Oh man, okay. I'm gonna find my expression pedal. I just wanna be able to test what that does. If it, if it does what I think it's gonna do, it's gonna rack either the time or the repeats knob. If it's time paired with an oscillator switch, like if, if the oscillator switch puts it into infinite repeats and the expression racks the time, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be very <laughs> excited about this. We've got a shorter and longer switch here. Let's see how long are the repeats. Fairly short, I'd say like 400, 500 milliseconds. Ooh, I guessed it. The longer time is 200 to 400 millisecond range and the shorter time is zero to 200 milliseconds. Wow, I nailed that, 400 milliseconds.
I like it already. <laughs> That's what I like in a delay. I was hoping that going in between that switch setting would do a huge kind of like octave jump on that. No, in one direction it stays the same and in the other direction it just kills it. I think if you hit it just right at the right time, then it it stretches it out, but it doesn't seem like it is a pitch change. See, I didn't hit it right that time. Yeah, not a pitch change, but a length of the signal change. And it seems like you gotta hit it just right. I don't know if there's any skill involved there or if it's just luck of the draw. But let's check out the more normal sounds with this delay pedal. That's a pretty sounding analog delay. There's no modulation or anything going on. It's a dry analog delay. That holds up for a decent amount of repeats before it starts falling apart and getting dark. A lot of analog delays will fall apart in like three repeats. And I like the ones that actually hold up quite a bit longer than that. I like the warmth of an analog delay, but I want more clean repeats, generally. Maybe I'm just assuming it's analog. It is degrading over time, but not in an extreme way. I think probably because it is limited to 400 milliseconds. Yeah, it's, I like that. It's getting dirty instead of getting murky as it goes. Yes, yes, that's what I wanted to happen. Dude, 
All right. I wish I had a camera down there so you could see, you know, the expression pedal. I love that. I love that. That's fantastic. It doesn't have modulation built in, but you can do your own modulation manually. That's dangerous. For someone like me, that's dangerous. I'm gonna have a lot of fun making a lot of really awful, terrible, nonsense noise. <laughs> this is going to my pedal board. I don't know if I'll commit an expression pedal to it for live playing, but having that oscillator as kind of like a freeze, sort of like hold and sample sort of thing is really fun. set ending pedal there it is jeez all right let's uh let's do some baritone and then a little bit of bass too where is my baritone <laughs>
cheating when it comes to dirt pedals because it just sounds amazing and heavy and brutal through every dirt pedal ever. But I mean, this is no exception, right? <laughs> That is low. That is super duper low. didgeridoo thing happening there. All right, enough of that. Let's do the bass. By the way, if you are baritone curious, I highly recommend those Squire baritones. They're, they're just fantastic. Not just for the money, but just for what they are. Like, they're a fantastic option as a baritone. The P90s sound great in them, especially when you run both for some humbucking. Ah, just massive. And they play great too. Really great feeling next on them. Time to be outside of my wheelhouse and play some long guitar. This is the Eastwood Classic 4. I've been trying to become acquainted with this enough that I can feel justified in buying myself a Dan Electra Longhorn. That's really the goal here. I've always wanted a Longhorn bass. Oh, there's a sub octave. For those of you worried about the two Princetons, I keep them really low. I don't think at this volume level that there's gonna be any damage to the speakers or the amps themselves from running bass through them. I do seriously wonder if anyone is going to be able to hear this through their phone speakers, though. 
it might just sound like nothing right now. With the sub octave off, it does kind of a fun, kind of like synthy sound. Am I in tune? There we go. Now I'm in tune. I think the bass definitely prefers the sub octave. Plenty of those little glitchy artifacts there when you hold your notes. Now the drive. I'll try my fingers. I know some of you long guitar boys out there are screaming at me right now. With the big round low end that this has, I think it could legitimately be a really great bass overdrive or bass distortion, however you classify the sound of that mix. But yeah, it's got plenty of low end character across that low knob there. I'm not, I'm not a long guitarist. I don't have a lot of big opinions on bass tone. So you guys out there and you gals out there playing the long guitars, you tell me what you think. Is this a good, bass overdrive. I'm I'm running through guitar amps as well, so it's not fully a, you know, a full representation of what bass should and could sound like. And then of course the delay. We know it works.
for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude and nasty comments. Check out the links to check these out. I don't remember the prices exactly, but I remember that they, they were not outside of what I would consider normal kind of production, affordable pedals, not affordable board affordable, but I remember them being kind of like mid 100s. So check out the links for them down below and check out the links for various other things I have in this video, the guitars, this expression pedal, this is the expression pedal I always recommend. It is the Moog expression pedal and it's never done me wrong. I've got a bunch of other expression pedals and that's the one I always go to first because I just know it's gonna work. And I honestly really love the feel of its physical throw. It's really nice and smooth and has a great big physical throw. So anyways, bye everyone, stay grounded.